Well, new research suggests that intense psychological trauma can actually impact a person's genes and be passed along to future generations. The condition is called epigenetic change. Researchers have found that this genetic condition caused children of the Holocaust survivors to develop acute stress and anxiety disorders. MTS Josh Many went to the Blackfeet Reservation to see whether the trauma suffered by the Blackfeet people in the second half of the 1800s is still having an effect today. Great Falls College MSU hosted a talk on trauma as a part of No More Violence Week in early April. Boston Medical Center's Courtney Bailey discussed a hereditary form known as intergenerational trauma. So the research is showing that um, that genes can be passed down and they're calling it kind of the, the trauma gene. Uh, and we're not really sure how it gets passed down, but we know that the gene gets adapted in some kind of way. Um, when a family has experienced trauma and that we can see that gene passed down for several generations. In 1830, the Indian Removal Act began a systematic effort by the U.S. government to remove Native Americans from their lands. The Blackfeet people experienced the Baker Massacre in 1870, where more than 200 women, children, and elderly were slaughtered. Then, in the winter of 1883-84, more than four times that amount of Blackfeet people died of hunger in the event known as Starvation Winter. These are just two of the most talked about events in countless other atrocities that the Blackfeet people have experienced. Blackfeet tribal member Carol Murray started researching the Baker Massacre as a student at Northern Montana College in Haver. Murray was driven to uncover the truth, but soon found out why so little was known about the massacre. Elders feared punishment from the government for talking about it. But Murray persisted, knowing that sharing the story would begin the healing process for her people. If you walked in this room and there were like over 200 people hanging from the ceiling, dead. And then you walk back into the other room and expect to get on the computer and be able to write a story about it. But that, that scenario of, because basically that's what my instructor asked me to do. Go home, talk to your people, find out about the Baker Massacre and write a paper. On January 23rd, 1992, the anniversary of the Baker Massacre, Blackfeet Community College's Carol Murray got the community to visit the Marias River. The commemorative community visits to the Marias, where the massacre happened, helped the Blackfeet to begin openly talking about the atrocity. 34-year-old descendant Narcissus Rivas says it makes him feel anxious, angry, and sad all at once, and wishes he could have been there to protect his family from being murdered. Rivas has won the Ultimate Warrior Endurance Race six times. The race consists of 21 miles of running, canoeing, and horseback racing. He says he uses his sadness to tap into his inner warrior. Sometimes when I train, I think of stuff like that to help in our ancestors and I use that in a good way when I'm training, try harder. The Montana Department of Corrections 2015 biennial report states that American Indians continue to be overrepresented as an ethnicity in the prison system. Murray believes there's a connection between passed down trauma and the high rate of Blackfeet people in jail. Why are there so many? Do they go off, just go off angry and just lose um, all control because of these effects of intergenerational trauma that are just now spilling out? In Browning, Josh Many, MTN News.